Tri Library Association and Taylor Audio. Tonight, it is our honor and responsibility to acknowledge that we gather on land that is sacred to all indigenous people who came before us in this vast crossroads for Utes, Goshutes, and Shoshone peoples and their ancestors. It has been their stewardship for time immemorial to care for this land and all of its inhabitants, both two and four legged, winged and waterbound. We honor their memory, their physical presence in our state today, their ancestors' presence here in spirit, and we do so in our reverence for their resilience in preserving their connections to the Creator. We honor the people, we honor the land. I now invite Forrest Kutch, Youth Tribal Elder and former Director of the Utah Division of Indian Affairs, to open our program with a blessing. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Nice to be back and around friends, old friends. It's been a while since I've been, been rubbing shoulders with legislators and state colleagues. I enjoyed my years at the Division of Indian Affairs. I served 13 and a half wonderful years. I have wonderful friendships that last to this day. So it's good to see some of you out there that I know. So, um, during the dinner, talking to some wonderful people, and we talked about healing. We talked about connection. And so I want to speak to those things in, in my prayer because I feel we're facing some very difficult times right now. We're, 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 we're in a dis disconnected world, and, uh, and we're suffering consequences. We're harming not only each other, but we're harming the earth. And so we need to reconnect. So I want to speak to that in my prayer. Our Father, Lord God, our Father in heaven, we come together this night, all of our friends here, those of us who believe in the importance of our history and our culture, Father, and the sacredness of all. We ask that you. Continue to watch over us, hear our prayers, and bless each and every one of us and what we what we do, our endeavors here, Father. Because many of the programs and people here believe in preservation. They believe in connecting. They believe in sharing, Father. We call upon your powers, Father, through Jesus Christ, to heal our nation. Our begin with our state, Father. The forefathers here at the state of Utah. Very, very wise, and they uh, it took a lot of integrity for them to name our state after my people, the Udayan people. Last blessings for them for that, Father, and all of their their uh, descendants, because it was an easy thing to do. And you know these things, Father. You've been with us all these times. You've watched us struggle in this state. You've watched the conflicts, the suffering, and the pain that's occurred here, but you also have made it possible for us to heal and come together in friendship and love. So I ask this blessing on our people today, for everyone here, the Utah Cultural Alliance and all of its uh, affiliates, to be blessed so they will continue to do what they've set out to do, and that they can do it in a sacred way, and that you will stand by them through Jesus Christ, God. I say these things in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you. All right. Hi, everybody. We thought it would be so fun to be in this beautiful Bravo Hall in, in this intimate gathering to just enjoy the most wonderful night ever. And so, if you don't know me, I'm Crystal, and uh, we're going to be talking culture wise. And I want to start with gratitude. And I know I say this a lot, but I cannot say it enough. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, this industry is surviving its darkest two years in history because of you. And you all continue to step up for Utah's arts and cultural industry. Thank you. And I can spout numbers all day long about the value of this industry, but you all know that our secret sauce is our magic. It's the memories, bonding experiences, and learning opportunities that we share when we experience culture. And you all get this magic, and we are grateful. So this building right here in today, beautiful Bravo Hall, 
is the home of Utah Symphony, and this was actually built in a partnership between the state of Utah and Salt Lake County to celebrate the bicentennial of the United States in 1976. And many of you know my background is actually uh, classical music. I'm a decent opera singer, a really bad pianist, <laughs> and a pretty good composer of weird music. And I love remembering my love for country and history every time I walk in this building, which I do a lot since I'm a classical music junkie. And America's 250th birthday is coming up in 2026, and I'm so excited to see what else might happen in the, as we combine the power of commemorating and remembering history with the magic of the arts. And that right there is the magic of the cultural industry. So this evening is a celebration. It's our love letter to all of you, the Utah legislature from this industry that is so grateful to you. This industry is arts, film, entertainment, live events, museums, libraries, history, and humanities. Our common thread is that we are the business of living. And you'll mostly see the performing arts tonight, but I wanna point out a couple of things. So this beautiful piece on stage is The Seven Pillars of Humanity. It was created by Tom Holman of Holman Studios in Lehigh. And this and the paintings from Springville Museum of Art, uh, the student competition represent the visual arts. Uh, we also have uh, books representing the humanities and libraries. This building itself is a testament to history and sound. We had a wonderful video looping in the lobby of, about our film industry. And we are so excited to all be here together. And I also want to give a shout out to Taylor Audio and Lex Catering for helping us out tonight because that's the behind the scenes that makes this magic happen. So before we, we launch into the program, we have a few uh, people to recognize and awards to give. So first I want to recognize our cultural caucus um, who is chaired by Senator Kurt Colomar, Senator Luz Escamilla, our outgoing chair, Representative Lowry Snow, and our incoming chair, Representative Jefferson Moss, and Representative Liz Waite. And so the five of them are all incredible champions and believers in this industry. And they all have deep backgrounds in this. Oh, thank you. You're welcoming me. I was gonna, I was gonna ask you guys to go on stage, but you beat me. Good job. So you all are fantastic leaders and supporters in this industry, and you have deep backgrounds in this industry, you just get it, so thank you. So can we give them a round of applause? <laughs> and uh, this is Representative Snow's last year in the session. I'm, I'm really sad about it. And so we have a special token of gratitude, this painting, um, it's, it's by David Pope for uh, Representative Lowry Snow's many years of service as our cultural caucus co-chair in the house. And, uh, and, and I first met with Representative Snow many, many years ago, even before we started working with Adam and Spencer. You were one of the first people to sit down with me and, and give me time of day and talk about arts and culture. And you were so gracious with your time because you believe in arts and culture. And, and so I want to thank you so much for your service. So can we all give them a round of applause? Thank you. And I also want to thank all of you in the audience because all of you legislators here are members of our cultural caucus. <laughs> We love that you all believe in this industry. So, round of applause to all of you. <laughs> um, and now I know you're all here for the performances, but we do have a few more awards to give tonight. So, we are going to give three stellar awards to three stellar elected officials today. Um, supporting the cultural industry takes work from across the state. And so we're excited that this year is our first year that we'll be recognized a city award, a county award, and a state award. And uh, we, uh, I want to thank our good friends at Utah Association of Counties and Utah League of Cities and Towns for partnering with us on these awards. And we're going to recognize our city and county awards at their upcoming conferences too in front of their, their colleagues. Um, and I also want to give a special shout out to Tom and Holman Studios who've created these beautiful awards that you can see on stage today as well as our beautiful piece. So 
Our first award is our 2022 City Cultural Industry Advocate Award, and it goes to Mayor Lenise Peterman of Helper City. And joining me on stage to present this award is Cameron Deal, who is Executive Director of Utility Gifts Cities and Towns. So, Mayor and Cam. Good evening, everyone. It is my honor to recognize Mayor Peterman, who has helped put Helper on the cultural map in the state of Utah. If you ever have the opportunity, please stop at Helper. Check out the historic Main Street. Go to the Mining and Railroad Museum. Visit an art gallery. Check out the beautiful, revitalized riverfront. And go to the Arts Festival during the summer. When you are there, recognize that Mary Peterman has her fingerprints on all of those activities and has really helped turn Helper into a cultural mecca. As a result, it's my honor to partner on behalf of the League of Cities and Towns and all 248 cities and towns in the great state of Utah to partner with the Utah Cultural Alliance for this award. Mayor Peterman, congratulations. really so honored to be nominated by Maria Sykes and Rita Vigor for this award and it truly does take a village and while I have the honor of leading it uh, without all of the hard work of the many citizens uh, Helper would not be where it is today so I very much want to give a shout out to those folks and to UCA for uh, acknowledging the hard work that we've done and will continue to do uh, for the cultural industry so thank you. Now, uh, Brandy Grace from Utah Association of Counties will join me to present the 2022 uh, County Cultural Industry Advocate Award to Commissioner Irene Hansen from Duchesne County. Wow. Thank you. Thank you. It's my pleasure to be here with Commissioner Hansen and uh, recognize her for her efforts um, within her community. Irene has been a commissioner now, this is the first term, but has been involved in county government for quite some time, uh, formerly the economic development director for her community. So in addition to just the, the arts, I happen to know a couple of things about Commissioner Hansen and, and her passion for her community. I once heard a story that, uh, that Irene um, will try to involve uh, business recruitment within her community and encourage growth in her community and also provide temporary housing um, for those relocating their community, open up her home and, and actually have people staying in her home. Um, I've also heard that, that within this last year, Mr. Hansen bought her first piece of original art. She can maybe tell us more about that, but, but I, I know that um, within our organization, Irene just does an incredible job of advocating for her community and is passionate. She's a hard worker, well-respected within the UF organization, and she's not afraid to say no. If, if, if there's something she doesn't agree with, she speaks her mind, and, but does it in a kind way and, and uh, is always looking for ways to bring people together. So I'm happy to be here with Commissioner Hansen tonight and, and recognize her in this. something when you become aware that someone has put you in for such a, an unbelievable opportunity um, to just be among people like you tonight. You know, no matter what I had planned to say, none of it matters because here we are in a Bravenel Hall. Can you believe it? Imagine the smiles, the healing, the new friends that have been made, the proposals of marriage that have happened here. Um, the, the announcement of new babies. What an amazing legacy this building has. And the people who love our culture and the arts of Utah. Have you noticed they're just, they're never depressed. They're always hopeful. And that's what, as I sat at the table that I did tonight, man, nothing happens by accident because I have been inspired tonight just by being here and being with the people at the table. And so I, I celebrate Utah. 
and the great people of Utah. I look forward to uh, all of the, the culture and art and all the beautiful things to come. Thank you. It's far easier to give a speech than it is to sing in German for six hours straight. I can tell you this for sure. So this person is also a musician, and to join me in announcing this award is Heather Collimore. Please welcome her to the stage. Kirk is passionate about the value of art 
arts, um, the value arts contribute to a family. The character of learning to participate and to be good at something even when tired and distracted by friends and other activities. He believed that the arts helps define a community and he has been a fierce advocate for what it contributes to the richness of life and the perspective of individuals and the discipline that is often lacking in today's working society and cultures. He was quoted recently by saying, music and the arts are essential to the beauty of life. They expand our view, the arts help us feel unified and understand emotion. They point us towards heaven to find connections with the divine. The arts are the pinnacle of life. Yes, the man being honored tonight, my husband Kirk Palmer Jr. is the man for all seasons, with those seasons including strengthening our state's investment in the needs and expansion of the fine arts. These things really do matter in our culture, our communities, and will always be a high priority and not just a random elective for our kids, our leaders, and our teachers, as long as Senator Colmore has a voice to speak, sing, fiddle, or play the piano. Our pioneer forefathers always made time and serious investments in the arts, and Senator Colmore is committed to that agenda and value tradition. So I may not be his first love, but I'm happy to take second fiddle to music, and I'm so proud of the man and the person that Kurt Colmore is. No one is more deserving of a music center honor um, than someone who honors music and her place in our hearts, souls, and lives as a life-expanding and lightning force for good. We sing an occasional duet together. Um, do that another time. And there's no one I'd rather harmonize with. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to introduce my own Billy Joel and Paul McCartney. Senator Paul. Super embarrassing. I, I really appreciate it. So let's just let's just move on with the show.
Please welcome to the stage Carmel Moore and the Wolf Creek Singers. My father's, um, my father's sister is Hoyeba, and that means falling arrow or an arrow coming down. Um, I'm happy to be here today. Um, I want to acknowledge our elders out here in the audience, especially our, our indigenous elders that are out here. And uh, I ask for forgiveness, but forgiveness if I say anything in a, in a wrong way. Um, I'm happy to be here. Um, I'm happy that we have gotten a, an amazing drum group that's going to be here. Wolf Creek is here um, from the uh, from a youth land right there. Well, actually, this is youth land right here, but where they kind of put them and stuck them up there and said you need to be there a long time ago. That's where they're from. But they really live down here in Salt Lake right now. Um, I want to start off by acknowledging that we are all on uh, indigenous land. Um, we, we have three tribes that have called this place uh, their, their land, their home, depending on the season, depending on the time. We have the you people. Oh, there it is. We have the you people. Um, we have the Goshen people. We have the Shoshone people. I want to acknowledge our relative down here, Gary Perry, uh, former chairperson, uh, chief of the Northwestern Band of Shoshone people. So uh, I'd like to acknowledge him. I also like to acknowledge, of course, Cut and his invocation this morning over there. Um, it's, it's good. It's good for uh, the people to be represented um, to which land this is. Again, this is Wolf Creek Singers. They're going to be singing me an important song. And a song. Um, this is a song. Um, there are songs made. Um, in a certain way, and you're going to see me dance in a certain way. This song is a duck and dive song. Does anybody know what a duck and dive song is? Nope. Isn't this a cultural uh, affair? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So now you're going to learn. This is a duck and dive. This is duck and dive. This song, these songs were composed on the United States military. We're shooting cannonballs at our people. We're using that Gatling gun to take down our people. So in this dance, what I do is I'm portraying our indigenous people. Ducking and diving and trying to get away from the, from the enemy. Um, and they're going to sing that. Their, their voices represent the, the, the anthem of our people. Um, as well as uh, this stick right here, this staff, this is medicine that's going to bless you, it's going to bless me, it's going to bless the singer, it's going to bless this place. Along with this eagle fan right here. These fans are, are, are give, gifts to us and they're given to us so that we can bless the people with these things. So in this dance, um, I'm blessed myself by the medicine that I wear, and uh, you all will be blessed. You'll also be blessed by this song. The, the, the drum right there, that's the heartbeat of Mother Earth. And us as indigenous people, we recognize that not only do we come from our mothers, our, 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 our uh, familial mothers, our mothers that we're born to, but we're also born by our mother. Our grandmother Earth, Uchimaka, Mother Earth right here, sustains us, takes care of us. And it's important that we take care of and acknowledge Mother Earth. Also, our, 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 our Father Sky and all the elements that are around us. So during this dance, um, you're going to see those those uh, those things. What we're going to be doing. This is a dance that was done by warriors, um, by uh, indigenous warriors. They would go out, they go into battle, or they would go hunt, and they would come back, and they would show the people what happened on the battlefield. They would show the people who weren't there what happened. Um, and so it's also a storyteller's dance. And maybe I'll be looking for tracks of, of the of the prey, maybe looking for tracks of the enemy. But, four. We're gonna be uh, in, in this fourth, actually on this fourth, on the fourth uh, round, you know, I'm gonna be dancing in victory for, for our people, for all of us people. Um, I like to say we're all related, and I really believe that, but we're all related, we're all people that come from Mother Earth. We all come from the same group, but that same group went out and we migrated to different spots, and the, and the creator said, you go here, you take care of this place. You go here, you take care of this place. You go here, you take care of this place. That's why I think it's very important that we acknowledge, again, people's, um, the indigenous people of every place that have been prepared to take care of. So, with that, um, I, I, I want to bless you all with this medicine that I wear. This is uh, Dr. Nye. Thank you. 
performing a selection for the play Thurgood. This production will be part of the 2022 season at the Utah Shakespeare Festival.
But if you want to hear about the rest of that, you'll have to come to me. I'll say some stuff. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'll be speedy. Uh, thank you to Crystal and everyone at the Cultural Alliance for hosting the dinner and inviting me when I invited myself. I wanted to come because I wanted to see this audience. My company, Magic Space Entertainment, has been here 35 years. We produce Broadway shows, concert tours, museum exhibits. Uh, you might think that entertainment isn't big business, but in Utah alone, in that time, we've sold just over 5 million tickets for $250 million, doing shows like Hamilton and American Musical, Phantom, Bob Dylan, uh, The Rolling Stones. Last May, we worked with Kurt Bester, Dallin Vale Bayless, Lisa Hopkins Segmiller, David Osmond, and 120 different Utah musicians, uh, dancers, singers, stage professionals to get a, to do a special three week run of Andrew Lloyd Webber's uh, music of Andrew Lloyd Webber. We were the only Lloyd Webber production last spring on the planet Earth. And I asked to come here we could do that for only one reason, because you, the Utah legislature, stepped up. You came to us and you said, we want a way to open these theaters, we want a way to put these professionals back to work, even if it means only the 500 people in the 3,000 seat hall. And in my entire career, it might have been one of the best things I've ever been able to do. So thank you immensely for doing that continue to do that. And maybe as a small way of saying thank you, I'd like to bring out my friend Dallin Vale Bayless, and he's gonna sing two songs from the production as a, a way of saying thank you for supporting all of us in the live entertainment business. Oh! 
better for being part of this magic tonight. And thank you all for sharing this with me. Um, I want to thank a couple more people uh, one more time. Our legislative dinner sponsors, Union Pacific Foundation, our Arts for Kids, Utah Library Association, uh, Taylor Audio and Visual, and a special staff shout out to all of our friends at Utah Department of Cultural and Community Engagement. Thank you so much for being our strong partners here. Can we give them all a big round of applause? <laughs> we just want to give you a reminder that tomorrow is actually the Senate High School Art Competition. So tomorrow you can see all of the amazing student artists from 9 to 10 a.m. in the Gold Room. And uh, to conclude, uh, we asked Tom Holman, who is the artist of this wonderful piece, Roots of Humanity on the Stage, to give us a statement about what this piece meant to him. And it was so profound that I want to read it as our closing remarks today. So he said, uh, nothing in our existence deepens our understanding, increases our knowledge, fills our minds with education and joy, or awakens our appreciation for humanity more so than arts and culture. It doesn't matter if it's a museum, a simple drawing, a masterpiece song, dance, music, theater, or the visual arts. Our cultural arts here in Utah are pillars of our souls. They educate us, they inspire us, they bring wonder to the hearts of our children. They increase our awareness of cultures that show how different we are and how much we are the same. Illuminating the arts in Utah can and will continue to bring great joy and understanding to our people. Children of all ages will increase their knowledge and appreciation for humanity. The cultural arts are all around us. As a butterfly flying in a child's open fingers, the arts of humanity open our hearts and minds to the goodness of all humanity. The arts are humanity. I always like to quote Ted Lasso, but I paraphrase and say, art is life. And I found that to be very profound. So gratitude is the focus of this evening. And so I end with this, a simple thank you and a good night.